When it comes to surgery, one of the things we talk most about is scar tissue and the effects that it has, both long-term and in the lead up to it. And, and you might wonder why we do that. Um, nobody else is talking about scar tissue. I mean, they talk about the appearance of the scar afterwards and trying to make sure it's not one of these uh, disfiguring sorts of scars. Uh, but what is unrecognized by even surgeons uh, is that that tip of the scar, what you see on the surface, sorry, that what you see on the surface is just the tip of the scar. And that scar goes as deeply as you were cut through your tissues, laparoscopic, what have you, all the layers that were cut through the connective tissue, that turns into scar tissue. Now, again, you might wonder why is that important? And that's because it's important because the connective tissue suit of the body, the fascial tissue suit of the body is supposed to glide. It's like a shirt that is supposed to glide upon things. It's fluid, uh, pliable, it shifts along other surfaces, it glides from layer to layer to layer to layer between muscles, between muscle fibers, between organs, between skin and muscles, muscle and bone, all of those layers of connective tissue are wrapped up in a suit that is supposed to glide. Now, through injuries, through impacts, through falls, that tissue has a tendency to thicken, stiffen, and glue uh, and adhere to each other. Uh, we are familiar with the concept of adhesions. Well, scar tissue from a surgery is a major source of restrictions and adhesions. That tip of the scar on the surface may, be, may look ugly, may look fine. Um, that's almost irrelevant in our mind. What's really important is what's going deep on inside because that tissue is now no longer gliding. It is bound, thick, caught, stuck. So if you imagine my shirt is a layer of connective tissue that has been cut and bunched up, sewn back together, sutured together, and it now stiffens and thickens and glues to the underlying surfaces, to the surfaces that are next to it. I no longer can move quite as I should. My ribs, if this is where it's at, my ribs are a bit stuck. I can't breathe through here the way that I should. It's pulling into my back. It's pulling down into my neck. This tissue, it's just like you see in my shirt. We think everything is separate. We see diagrams that are nice, neat, and separate, but that's not how it is in, in reality. In reality, all of this is pulling throughout your body, through my body, and it's causing me to get hunched, stooped, can't move as well, stiffer, lending itself to old age and old age problems. Scar tissue is a major factor in how your body is going to uh, be able to handle the next decades of life. And surgery is always a source of that. We here at ReleaseWorks help remove the effects of those restricted buildup scar tissue. Uh, we restore fluid pliability to the tissues that glide that your system is supposed to have, your tissues are supposed to have. Again, if you picture a one-piece bodysuit, it's like you've been stuck and shrunk and twisted. We undo that shrunk, shrinking, twisting, and stuck and get you moving again, which takes stress out of your system. It reduces a lot of the pains and stiffnesses and aches that you were having, and you, uh, you will have far fewer old-age breakdown problems. Scar tissue happens in the connective tissue. Um, Every time, connective tissue is everywhere. Everything is made out of connective tissue. Uh, we like to call it the fascia, so I'll probably use that for short. Um, the fascial tissue, the connective tissue, shapes and binds and separates and it is the architecture, it is the fabric of everything in your body. Now, a scar is like, imagine that that fabric tore or was cut. And in order to repair it, you overlap the fabric and stitch it back together, which is actually literally what happens in surgery. And then this tissue becomes thick and stiff right in there. That scar is now just a spot of hardened, thickened tissue, uh, connective tissue, and that pulls through the rest of the suit. So scar tissue will not just stay static. It is constantly causing a pulling through your body. Every bit of movement that you make, I'll, I'll, I'll do my, my scar here again, every bit of movement that you make pulls into that. It's a little bit of a micro stress into that area. And throughout time, that causes further and further and further spreading of that scarring. 
Now, it won't be necessarily called a scar. Uh, there is a bit of a difference in how, uh, in, 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 in degrees of how thickly stuck that is, but that connective tissue will thicken and stiffen along those lines that are being pulled, and you will get thicker, restricted fascial tissue, connective tissue from that scar. So the scar itself doesn't necessarily grow, but its effects do over time. Does the scar stay released? Do those restrictions stay released once we uh, once we address them? Uh, to a degree, yes. Sometimes to a very large degree, yes. But you got to keep in mind you are still living, and as you are moving and using your body, you are causing ongoing stress and uh, and well, and let's. Sometimes we might say the word trauma. I just plain mean micro traumas and stresses. Sometimes larger traumas uh, in, in bigger incidents. Uh, that will tend to re-stiffen, re-restrict your, uh, your tissues. Every body needs ongoing good care for their myofascial health, for, their, for the health of their myofascial system. A scar will sometimes need more deliberate attention to keep it from getting thicker and stiffer. Everybody needs ongoing care. A scar will sometimes need more specific care. Now, as you learn how to do that, you can do that with some quick daily attention, even weekly. It, it's, it's, not, it's not something that has to be onerously watched, but you do have to keep, uh, keep helping your body stay in its best shape, like brushing your teeth. Can you get scar tissue removed? That would be like saying, I had an injury here in my in my tissue, in my, in my suit. I repaired it. Now I've got scar tissue causing a problem. Can I just remove it um, by cutting it out? And by then what? Stitching more of it together? You're gonna have a bigger scar if you do that. You're gonna have a greater problem if you're removing scar tissue. Please don't try that approach. Uh, it's temporarily helpful. Uh, you, you can get some very sudden gains by doing that, but uh, every time I hear about a surgeon going in and cutting out scar tissue, I cringe. Uh, please don't do that to your system. It's far, far more effective to uh, long term to release it and have it stop binding so much. You do not get rid of scar tissue by doing further surgery. Every surgery will cause scar tissue. It can't not. Scarring is the body's response to damage, to cutting. That is what it does. Um, now, some will be bigger, some will be smaller. You can be smarter about how you do surgeries and the effects of the scar tissue. But every surgery, every procedure will cause scar tissue. And, and really, uh, scar tissue is just a greater example of the ongoing stresses that happen in your life. Every time you get smacked, it's causing scarring. Uh, we just don't see it and call it a scar. So your body will stiffen up and with the proper care and attention, it will free up again. It will become mobile again. But scars, sorry, surgeries and the scar tissue that they cause are a great example of when it was too much and you didn't catch up with its effects. You didn't, you didn't address the effects that that caused. So if you have taken all the, uh, the the topical effects. If you've looked at the, the appearance of the scar on the surface and you've applied cocoa butter, vitamin E, and all those sorts of things to reduce the appearance of the scar, great, that's helpful. You've probably done a lot of good work here on the surface. And, uh, and if you've been deliberate and thorough in your movement in recovering the mobility of your tissues, then you may not have an issue with your scar. Most people miss that step. Most people get a little bit stiffer, and by the time they can move again, six to eight weeks later, they've forgotten that this area doesn't move very well, and they carry on as if that's all there is, uh, as if the appearance of the scar on the surface is the only thing that matters. But underneath, they are stiffer. Those tissues aren't moving, or, or they're moving kind of in a block-like sort of a way. You're getting pulled from the inside. This area is just plain not as mobile as it should be, and that causes stresses and problems elsewhere in the body, and other things start to break down. So it's a fantastic thing to take care of the appearance of the scar on the surface. If that's all you've paid attention to though, 
there's a there's a deeper story on going on that you really ought to take a look at and consider that it may be having a very large effect on you. Many times people have a hard time crediting this idea that the scar, the scar tissue is causing problems. They can hardly see it, they don't feel it, it doesn't hurt. And that's one of the difficulties, that's one of the reasons why problems, uh, restrictions in the myofascial connective tissue system go un, uh, they go missed, they go unrecognized. It's because the area that is stuck doesn't hurt. Uh, let me give you a, a, my example here. If I'm pulled and caught right here, this spot isn't moving. This spot doesn't hurt. In fact, it's usually kind of out of my awareness. It's, it might be a little bit numb or I, I, it might feel, might feel okay, but it's not moving. It's not causing a pain signal. But if you see what that did to my body. Now that tissue is reached, that scar tissue is reaching through my ribs, possibly through my lungs, my diaphragm, uh, over here to this other side. And it's causing stress here in my, in my low ribs. It's causing a lack of mobility here in my left side. It's causing my neck to get pulled over here to the left. And this is where I'm gonna start hurting. I'm gonna start jamming and twisting through the base of my head and I might get headaches or jaw problems or tinnitus or sinus problems. Um, I might start having disc issues in my neck. I might have pinched nerve issues anywhere along here. My shoulder might feel weak uh, or painful. I might start getting frozen shoulder or carpal tunnel syndrome because of how my, uh, my structure has been shifted and stressed. None of that is very readily apparent to somebody who just feels here nothing, feels nothing here, and feels pain here. It's hard to connect those lines, connect those dots, when all we have to pay attention to is a signal of pain. But the pain is not the problem spot, it is the breakdown spot. It's like the car, sorry, on your car, the tires that wear unevenly, it's not the tires problem, it's the, it's the alignment of the car. It's not speaking up, the tires are the symptom. Same in your body. Where you hurt is the result of the problem that is hidden elsewhere. So many people have been told that they need to have their scar tissue broken up. That is a form of what we call aggressive soft tissue mobilization. That can be a useful um, approach, but it's not the only approach and it's not always the best approach. Uh, sometimes tissues have gotten so thick and stuck that they need a little bit of extra help to get moving before anything can happen. But it shouldn't be a lot of painful digging through and breaking up. Um, one thing that I would like everybody to understand is that aggression into the body, even if you intend it to be for health, aggression into the body causes your body to respond as if it's been injured. Now, aggressively breaking up a scar, the body is going to kind of go, ah, and it's very likely to thicken around that again. It's going to wait, I was using that for protection. You know. So aggressively digging through tissues and painfully digging through tissues can get you some, some uh, very impressive mobility gains. They often uh, reverse quickly. Sometimes we get asked, how do you know whether this is scar tissue or tight muscle or what is that that you're feeling? Uh, tight muscles are muscly and tight and often achy. And the thing about tight muscles is that they get blamed for a lot of the problems when actually they're trying to handle a lot of the problems. Muscles are tight because they're trying to cope with the situation. What situation? Well, imagine again that you're one-piece bodysuit has been shrunk, twisted, glued, and stuck somewhere. And your body now has to deal with that. Where am I going to be tight in this sort of position? I'm gonna be tight here. I'm gonna be tight here. Those muscles will be perpetually tight, uh, possibly you know, elsewhere as well, because they are trying to hold me up against a suit that is pulling me over. That is different than scar tissue. Than scar tissue. Scar tissue won't necessarily be able to contract. It will tend to feel thick, stiff, ropey. It may be painful to the touch, but it's not something that you'll be able to contract. Now, is it 
really important to feel the difference. Sometimes, sometimes not. Scarring and scar tissue can occur in muscles and it can cause those muscles to be tight. So maybe some of it's blended. Everybody's situation is unique. Um, but anything that is hard, anything that is does not move, anything that feels wooden, stiff, uh, that tissue needs help. And, uh, and scars, for uh, to, to be a little bit more clear on that, scar tissue is just a large degree of restricted fascial tissue. Restrictions happen all over the place for a variety of reasons, any kind of force, any kind of impact. Scar tissue is just a greater degree of that. With all of this, you might be getting concerned that surgery, even if it fixes a problem, is going to cause a greater problem. And not to be playing on fears, that actually can happen. It's a well-known fact that back surgery is should be avoided for most people because once you do it, you start to have further problems above and below the spot that was fixed. Um, that's not how it has to go. So surgeries, whether they're necessary or not, should ideally be prepared for and recovered from with somebody who is very aware of myofascial health. If you properly address what's going on in your tissues, you can recover very well from surgery and, and head off a lot of these problems. If you ignore it, well then what I would say to you is that there is a good potential for a lot of a great deal of problem and please don't ignore it but knowing how to take care of your myofascial health uh, the health of your myofascial system will make all of the difference how do you best look out for your myofascial health you got to talk to somebody who's who knows how uh, our society is not good at it we tell each other to stretch we tell each other to uh, to drink lots of water and that's a good start but it's often improperly focused. Really, you need to start, everybody needs to start with, uh, with somebody who's very good uh, and well-versed in the fascia system. And that's just because our society is so far backlogged. Uh, we each have decades of buildup of problems. Uh, so I would love to give you a simple stretch or a simple approach, but that's just not possible at this point. If we were starting from ground zero, from, from day one, then good movement and use of your body would take care of most of your needs. You'd probably be fine if you were moving like we used to. But these days, we sit in cars and desks and chairs all the day long, and uh, we don't move our bodies well, so we have a build-up backlog of problems. That being said, one of the best things to do is stop trying to overstretch everything. Stop trying to push through things. Your body will do its best to accommodate what you are asking for. And if you're constantly pushing through pain, you're going to end up in more trouble. So the thing most people need to learn to do is slow down a bit and pay attention to the sensations that their body is already giving them, that they have actually numbed out to a long time ago. Uh, once you do that, you'll start finding your way through. We each have an innate wisdom. Uh, and an ability to heal is just been ignored for too long. So part of what a, uh, a very good myofascial health expert will help you do is tune back in to your body's own healing wisdom. Many people tell us when we give them the advice that they need to slow down and feel, many people respond that they don't want to because when they slow down, they, they feel how much they hurt. To them, I say you have a choice. You can keep on pushing through until you hit that wall and you break down and you stop. And that can happen later on in your 80s. It can happen in your 60s, your 50s. For some people, it happens as early as their 20s and 30s. But sooner or later, you'll hit a wall. And the harder you push, usually the more you hurt and the bigger that, that sudden impact will be. There are a number, a large number of people who are going along that we, that we hear from every day, who are going along, doing just fine, pushing through, carrying on, never letting it stop them, until they ended up in 
pain that was too severe. Debilitation. Uh, they lost the ability to push through that and then they had an incredibly hard time recovering. You have a choice to keep pushing through or to slow down and listen to what your body is desperately trying to tell you that you need. We advise the second. If you pay attention to your body, it can last for a great deal longer than what our society is used to. You can be one of those active, enjoying life, doing what you want to do, 80 year olds. I believe that's possible for everybody who has not already shoved themselves too far.